I think it's the kind of thing that 100% warrants firing your coach, but they can't and they won't. And while I would stand behind firing a coach for that kind of colossal asinine blunder, I don't think it's best for them to fire their coach. Like if I'm looking at it objectively, I wouldn't fire him, even though that is a very fireable offense, a very fire, fireable offense. I called around, I asked, I've never coached in college football. So I wanted to know, and I'm serious about this. I wanted to know who has hierarchy, who is allowed, typically speaking, on a staff to weigh in on the headset. So in the moment that the, the fun time I had in the spring game wearing the headset, something that stood out to me while listening to the plays being called, both offensively and defensively, was the amount of voices that are in a head coach's ear, okay? So Mike Norvell, and that is the process every week, whether that was a spring game and we were having some fun or it's a regular season game. They, the process was the same, and he took us through it, and I'll be forever grateful for that, learning how they came up with what they wanted to call and why against what looks. So we got privy to that, right? And while we were wearing the headsets, I, I thought to myself, A, this is faster than you, you think it is. Everything is happening faster than you really realize than when you're sitting in the stands or watching at home on your couch. It's happening very quickly. There's a ton of information being digested right and and so the head coach ultimately is hearing everything and he can tell guys to shut up or he can turn off their mic he can ask somebody to stop talking and i heard that <laughs> so that can happen all right but there are only really going to be about three people besides the head coach that are going to ever really weigh in on a headset in a game you have an offensive coordinator and a defensive coordinator and then maybe an assistant head coach would be and he's usually one of those. If he's not, he would also have a say. And the reason I'm bringing all this up is that can never happen. What happened, and it's awesome that it happened, and screw Mario Cristobal in Miami, and the pain that they caused is just wonderful, wonderful food for, uh, for thought and joy. It's sustenance. It's the stuff that we love about college football. The agony Miami finds themselves in now with a head coach that can never be trusted again a head coach that is no longer liked by his players, a fan base that once again has to come under the, the reality, the, the, the realization that they don't matter again for the 20-something year in a row. They are irrelevant yet again. That's all awesome. But I did want to get to the bottom of how that happens without a single person saying, what are you doing? How is it that nobody, I mean, I could be some slap, some, some slappy, on the end of the bench, if I have access to a headset, there's no chance. I, I don't care what my role is. I'm saving this guy's job. There's no chance you run that play. How does somebody not go, yo, 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 no, no, we don't have to do this. No, no, no. Like, at the very least, and he said it afterwards in the press conference after kind of stutter effing his way through that excuse at the beginning before finally taking ownership about three minutes into it. He says, well, we should have called a timeout. And somebody said, well, why would you call a timeout? Oh, yeah, 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 you should have. If you were that kind of bum-fuzzled over what to do, you know, the tough decision between take a knee or not, then you should have called a timeout. Because here's the deal. If you call a timeout with one second on the play clock and then took a knee, you're still going to win. Georgia Tech doesn't have any timeouts, you dumbass. So as you're watching this, think to yourself there's that everybody is so afraid of Mario Cristobal that's the kind of environment that he has fostered in Miami that nobody, not a single person, thought to say, this is dumb. Don't do this. Coach, you don't know me. It's Jerry. I'm the equipment guy. I'm letting you know now. Don't run a play. Take a knee. Somebody's got to take him. Somebody's got to tell him. But nobody did. And the fact that it never comes up shows you just how fractured that environment must be, that work environment must be. How do, it's impossible. It is impossible to have that happen. A, you have to wonder how it is your coach sat stupefied as the, the waning seconds of that game ran off and we see a kid shrieking behind <laughs> and getting open. <laughs> 
as you're watching it. As a lollipop is delivered into the secondary. Oh, and it's a beautiful leading pass on the move. Just get you some of that. Chad Pennington thinks that guy has a weak arm. It's a beautiful throw, though, because he doesn't have to do anything else with it. He leads him while running. All he's got to do. By the way, kid almost blows it. That little stupid slide thing with the new slide rules, they could have. That was close. Don't do that, dumbass. Run through into the end zone. What are you doing? It was Jordan Travis against Florida. They would have marked him at the one. Also, there were levels of dumbassery happening everywhere. Somehow, Brent's on the other sideline trying to outdo him with the little squib kick out of bounds. to the. What are we? Is this the dumbest group of people ever assembled to coach football? So as I was watching that again, over and over again, I, I thank goodness, by the way, for uh, what's his face, the, the color analyst, one of the, the brother who played quarterback. Uh, yeah, Hasselbeck. Yeah. Was it Matt Hasselbeck or was I it, it was Tim? Matt. I don't, yeah. I don't remember. So he's, you could tell yes. without saying it, he's trying to let everybody know, I can't believe what I'm seeing. What are they doing? I think was a phrase uttered or. Well, you don't have to don't do this. You don't have to do this. This is all before the snap. He's recognizing they're about to do this thing. It seems as if the football gods have a wonderful sense of humor. The game was going to end and Miami was going to win, but then they they lined up in something other than victory formation and the football gods went, oh, really? You want that kid to get 100 yards rushing, don't you? You selfish son of a bitch. He wouldn't admit it. He was asked that very question after the game. That's what he wanted. He's a former offensive lineman. Rushing yards is an offensive line stat. I'll bet you anything. In his gut, he wanted that kid to get 100 yards rushing. It's all crazy. The only other scenario that you can think of was something else he was asked after that game, which was, did you think they had a timeout? Because, by the way, just so people at home know, that is a reasonable and plausible explanation. Did you think it was a different down? Yeah. So. Right. Here's the thing. If you thought they had a timeout, you could remedy that situation very quickly. You could look up at the scoreboard and see that they didn't. There's that one. You're also, as a head coach, allowed to turn to the side judge and ask, do they have any timeouts? They have to tell you. (laughs) He could have done either one. He didn't either, apparently. So either he thought they had a timeout or he wanted to get that kid 100 yards rushing or both. But either way, all of it is a level of dumbassery that we should sit back in awe and ponder for the years to come. It is unimaginable. And it all leads to the kind of pain that I want every Miami fan to feel on a weekly basis. I love it. I hate that program. I hate that team. I hate their fans. And to see them have to suffer to this degree is heaven. Screw them eternally.